Dumela Mavon. Dumela Ndati. How are you, ma'am? Yeah, P. Lelegay. Ah, not a day. That's the beauty of being South African. <laughs> you can bula bula, you can kuluma, you can teta, you know? I can, I can prat. Ah, no, I can't prat more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we, when we sing the national anthem, I know there are a lot of people, when you get to this term, hey, yeah, we mama a little bit. Yeah. And we go, well, we, need mama, embrace, mama. we need to embrace the yeah, diversity true. that we are. Mayvon, you have such an interesting history and profile that's very unique. But maybe before we go... Uh, deep into many things. Maybe let's talk about your background. I know you were born in Soweto. Maybe tell us a little bit more about your family background, siblings, and your upbringing in general. I was born in Dobsonville mm. on the 18th of March, 1965. You're so, even comfortable to tell us your of age? Of course. Yo, you know, yo, yo, you yo. know why? Yeah. Because just to live, mm. is, um, it's not a given. Yes. It's by the grace. Absolutely. So I'm happy to be 57, mm. not ailing, mm. looking good, mm. happy, mm. and um, yeah, you know, uh, the lifespan of mm. our people because of different things, mm. sicknesses, you know, d different things mm. has, it, it's just diminished. Yeah. So I'm happy to be 57 and, um, and I say it with a full mouth. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's so powerful. You've been married for how many years? 33 years. 33 <laughs> years. But you must have a secret sauce. No, I don't. How is it possible that you married for 33 years? Some people can't even last six months. <laughs> hmm? I'm not even talking marriage. I'm talking about just a relationship. Six months is too long. There's actually absolutely no recipe okay. for being a parent. Yes. You know, mm. there's no recipe for marriage. Right. I think it's you, you do it as you go and say, I hope I'm on the right track. I'm here to have a partner, not to compete with him, mm. but for both of us to work together mm. and complete each other. That's what I live by. Mm. When my husband met me, he was a very popular young doctor and mm. people were saying, what does a doctor do with a musician mm. and all those things. And they didn't realize that he was a physician. Yes. I'm a musician, yes. so it rhymes. Mm, wow, <laughs> physician, musician, in <laughs> the <and> somewhere lab. <laughs> Precisely. But on a very serious mm. note, for me, I just saw a guy. Mm. I didn't care whether he was a driver, whether he was a petrol attendant. Mm. I just fell in love with the person. Mm. So his accolades or his tag didn't mean much to me. Mm. I just fell in love with the person. Yes. And uh, when people gave my marriage three months, I just said, you know what, it's all in God's hands. And 33 years down the line, mm. we're still good friends with my husband, yeah, but we hate each other now. Yeah. You know, after 33 years, <laughs> you, hate, you fight for the remote control. Okay. Yeah, hey, we hate each other, we fight for the remote control. He wants to watch golf, yeah. he wants to watch um, mm. races. Mm. And you know what do I want to watch? Mm. I want to watch 157 oh, and laugh. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. You know, uh, people were, wouldn't give the relationship three, three months, but it went to 33 years. Yeah. Wow. But it sounds like a recipe to me because you're saying it, it sounds like um, you need to be somebody who is open-minded, who, who has um, an open heart or teachable heart. You're willing to learn uh, as you go along. Because there are people who just not prepared to learn anything. They know everything. I guess um, I am actually grateful to God for making me want to be teachable, mm. want to listen to others. Yes. But I know mm. really what I want as yeah. well. Yes. You can't sway me. Yes. Y you can't. Mm. You know, if I have 20 rents and mm. I've decided I want to do this with my 20 rents, mm. I do just that. You can't sway me. Mm. But uh, obviously when it comes to relationships, you have to, to, to be open to mm. be taught, yes. to learn to appreciate others, to tolerate others. Mm. And um, yeah, you know, you can't decide to say, I want to do it on my own. Yes. That's right. Mm. Yeah. What I'm also hearing is uh, communication, you know, because for you to learn, you have to listen, but not just listen, but listen to understand. 
um, and, and I guess in, in a marriage, there's a lot of that that needs to happen. Because when you look at a lot of marriages that are failing, you find that there's no communication. When the money subject comes up, then uh, it just becomes double trouble. Why do men hate the money subject? <laughs> <Please tell me. laughs> men don't like talking about money. Yeah. What do you think is the, is the I reason? don't know. You're a man. You should tell me. <laughs> I don't understand. When you yeah. start talking about money, mm. uh, somebody will tell you, hey, I'm watching TV. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I'm doing this. I don't know. You men are silly. <laughs> it's silly. <laughs> I'm scared to comment, you know what, because I'm going to have a lot of men who say, no, but we have not appointed you as chairman of the men's conference. So why are you speaking on our behalf? You know? but, but be that as it may, I mean, for me, it's such a beautiful story. It takes, I think for me, it takes a person, a woman or a man of character to be married for such a long time and 33 years of learning the other person. And I guess the learning doesn't stop, does it? It never stops. As I said, there's absolutely no recipe for marriage. Mm. There's absolutely no recipe for parenting. Mm. You can teach your children that when you go to bed, you just pray and wash your hands before you eat, when mm. you come out of the bathroom, and you're not with your children 24-7. You're mm. not with your husband or your partner 24-7. Yes. Mm. They can go and do other things on mm. the other side. But for me, it's not to police them. Yes. It's for them to do the right thing, because mm. wherever I am, I try so hard to do the right thing as yes. well. Mm. So for me, that is that, you know, you can do whatever. I don't want to answer my husband's phone. He doesn't yeah. answer my phone as well. Yeah. Because he's changed. But local language is Yeah. You. Mm. Hey, you know, you know, you just touched on another <laughs> subject there. Because I, I think I mean, if you're talking about young couples, um, you know, issues of a phone is, is a big problem. It's better when a person knows that I've got nothing to hide on my phone. But there's nothing, exactly. Yes. You know, um, in fact, I, I only started putting a code on my phone because my children were stealing a time oh. on my phone. <laughs> Otherwise, I leave my phone there. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I mean, I've got male friends. Mm. I've got female friends. Mm. And um, if my husband goes through my phone and he says, why is John calling you? Yeah. I'm like, call John, ask him, why is he calling me? Yeah. You know, yeah. so because you, you can't hold, you, you can't tie a person <laughs> on your hip. Yeah. If they want to be good to you, they'll mm. be good to you without mm. even you looking. If they want to be bad, they'll mm. be bad. So, so be it. Yeah. yeah. Do you think the same, the same thing should apply when it comes to money or bank accounts? That kind of level of openness. So, you know, oh, oh. I must say, mm -hmm. I love money. Yes. Yo, I love money. Yes. I work hard for it. Mm. But I do not worship it. Yes. I think there's a difference when you work hard. Mm knowing where you put your money mm. so that your money can work for you. Mm. And when you start worshiping money, that becomes my problem. Yes. If my husband is happy to share the account with me, it's okay. Mm. If I travel to Kenya or Uganda, I tell my husband, I'm going to do the show, I'm getting paid X amount. Mm. And um, he trusts me with his money. And yeah. you know what in my household? Mm. My money is mine. His money is mine too. <laughs> wow. So what levels of comfort should there be between married couples when it comes to the subject of money? I mean... I think really for me, we should be open to each other when it comes to everything. Yes. Whether you're buying a new car, whether you want to buy furniture, whether you want to buy a new property or an added property, mm. I think it's always good to, mm. to, to just be open. I don't fight with my husband for money. Yeah. We can fight about other things. Mm. If there's some level of discomfort or distrust um, when it comes to the subject of money between couples, what sort of challenges do you think that can create in a marriage, where there's someone who's just, I, ah, when it comes to money, they are wishy-washy. I don't think I'm in a position to answer that mm. because I'm such an independent woman. Mm. I do everything that I want with my money, mm. and I do everything that I want with his money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are things that I don't mm. even buy. You know, mm. when it comes to um, foam baths, soaps, and he buys them. It's his job to do that. to do that. He can't cook, yes. and he hates this. Yeah. He can't cook. He can't even make an egg. Mm. He can't even wash dishes. Mm. But I've said to myself, this is who he is, yes. and um, I'm, I'm happy with that. Mm. I, I, I love cleaning. Yes. So it's not a problem. I get angry. Mm. You know what gets me? Mm. It's a, a sink with water. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> I wish I could kill him, but I've 
come to say this yeah. is just him. He yeah. comes from work and he washes his hands mm. and the sink is full of water and mm. I get so upset, but I just said, that's just who he is. Yeah. I don't like ironing. Mm. My husband irons my clothes for me. Wow. Yeah. So mm. there's there's good and bad, you know, mm. there's we have to tolerate each other and so really, you know, uh, I know he does whatever he wants mm. with his money as well. Mm. But you know, we always say, okay. The children need this. Mm. Um, our children are big now, mm. anyway. Yeah. The house needs fixing here. We need to do that. And but, I must say, I've never had, I've never fought with my husband for money. No. Wow. No. Wow. And I thank God for that. Yeah. I really thank God for that. Wow. Yeah. You know, and I know you say there's no recipe, here, but I think in your humility, because you are free where you are, and I can assure you, I mean, what you're what you're sharing now. It's very different in many other families in terms of the level of comfort between couples on, on issues you don't fight over certain issues, you're just open. And also, you understand that he's not perfect, you're not perfect yourself, therefore, we're learning each other and there's a level of tolerance and, and listening to each other. And I guess that's probably one of the big reasons why you've been together for so many years. I, I I really don't know. Um, in fact, I'm surprised why he's still with me. Yeah. <laughs> for so long. But yeah. um, but you've also been with him I've for so been long. With him for so long. So it's um, mm. he knows who I am. Yes. I want to think I know who I am. Mm. Uh, my husband plays golf. Mm. I mean, he loves golf. Mm. So mm. fellow guys we golf. Yeah. At first, I hated it. But mm. we used to play as a family. Mm. We've got four boys, mm. you know, and our daughter, Nompi. Mm. And we'll all go play, you know, golf. And so I just thought, ah, chasing mm. a small ball, yeah. you know. But he loves that. So mm. he plays with the boys. Mm. And I've come to accept that that's what he loves. Mm. And he's there. Mm. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I mean, he works when he wants to. Mm. And that's what he loves. Mm. And I've decided I'm not going to be upset. Mm. I'm not going to be shouting yeah. when it comes to this. I wake up in the morning and I say, hey, Smiley, I think I want to go to New York. Yeah. And he looks at me and I'm like, I'm buying a ticket, ne? Yeah. And it's like, and I go. Wow. Yeah. We've got so much to learn, uh, indeed, from, uh, from, from you in terms of how you handle this thing called marriage. I want to now switch slightly to talk about how you grew up. Uh, with, a, with a mom raising you, apparently at the time, was earning about 40 rand a month. I can only imagine that it, requ it, it required a lot of juggling and living within the means within that 40 rand a month. You know, let me tell you my story, which uh, some of my friends always say, why do you tell this story? Mm. My dad was a gambler. Mm. He played dice. Yeah. My mother gambled. Mm. She played Muchaina. Uh, even with that 40 rand a month. Fafi. But for me, mm. I look back today as a 57-year-old and yeah. I say, I love my mother. You know why she played Fafi? Mm. It was to augment her salary to take wow. us to school. Wow. She wasn't gambling for the sake of gambling. Yes. Even my dad. Mm. Dad will wake up in the morning on a Saturday, mm. clean the kitchen, mm. put the water. Off he went to play my dice mm. and he comes back with the money and put it on the table and say, Maskumbos, there's the money for the children for the mm. whole week. Mm. He was a good man. Yeah. He tried for us. Mm. And, but when he lost, yo, 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 aglan. <laughs> oh. I mean, it will be chaos. Sure. So I grew up in that situation. Mm. And I look back and I say to my mom, with the mega 40 rands mm. that she earned, she had to try means to make sure that the three girls, Doreen, Drifilwe, and myself, mm. have clothes, have food, mm. have, uh, and, and go to school. Because mm. dad died when I was 11. So my eldest sister was uh, 15 at mm. the time. Mm. My middle sister was 13. Mm. So it, was, it wasn't easy. Mm. But I thank the madam. Pat, Pat, she was Pat Minoy and she became Pat uh, Ferry. Mm. She looked after us. You know, I only had new clothes that December. Yeah because I always had my hand-me-downs. Yes. And that's it. So those clothes had to carry me for, for the, the whole, whole year. year. Until the next year. Until the next year. Mom will ask you, what do you want? Mm. Yeah. Christmas. Mm. And you're a child. You don't know how to choose. And, mm. But she really tried. And mm. I must say that wherever she is, mm. I want to say to her, 
Nyabong and Domgangwenyet for making me the woman that I am. And mom was very protective of us yeah. because no Tom, Dick and Harry mm. was allowed to come at home. Mm. She could have said, Gubi, mm. you don't have a father. Mm. I earn 40 rents. Mm. Panda. Mm. She never did. Mm. She guarded us. She was strict. Mm. She protected us. And she tried so hard to play Fafi to 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 make us have food mm. and clothing. So I am so grateful to her. Yeah. That's my story. How much influence did she have on your relationship with money? Mom was a gambler, as I said. Mm. You know, until I passed my metric, mom was still playing Fafi. Mm. It was after I finished metric, I took myself to university after that. When I started singing, she, she stopped uh, playing for, I know the number from one to 36, but eh? yeah. <laughs> yeah. But mom um, was very good with, mm. with writing. Mm. Mom will play in China, Katuranta, Atole, whatever, mm. and she'll say, this one is going uh, for investment. And you think, hey, somebody's investing six rents, yeah. you know? And uh, this one, now nah, Yvonne, Eyakole for the whole week's combos, yeah. and it's 50 rands. Mm. And you think Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 10 rands, 10 cent, 10 cent, 10 cent. Mm. And by Wednesday, 50 cent. Yeah. If a deal. Not 50 rands. Yes. 50 cent. 50 cent. Because you must have uh, Koda, mm. so, ne? Koda mm. seven rand. Mm. And then if you want uh, Zambane and Acha and two slices. Mm whatever and then if you want some beans yes. you know you have to top up got the mm. food was cheap at that it time was, it was and indeed. and we really managed but mom with the little that she had mm. she she tried to invest you know um it was very funny when my mother passed on mm. in 2007 mm. it was the easiest thing i've ever seen mm. she wasn't educated but my mother had gone to cna I didn't even know. Mm. Mom went to CNA, bought that will paper, wrote, I've got three daughters, Skoboza, wow. Refula, Yvonne. Mm. My house in Dobsonville is for my three kids. Mm. I have two accounts, one savings, one investment. It must go to my grandchildren. Mm. She wrote it. Well, she got somebody to write it because yes. when we checked, it wasn't her handwriting. Yes. Mm. And my clothes, give it to my sisters and my friends and whoever. The furniture and the house, my girls will see what to do with it. It was so easy and wow. she put it in a cupboard and she kept on telling us, mm. in that cupboard, there's, there's everything that you want. Mm. Even the 24 rand that I got married with, it still was there. Wow. You know, uh, uh, the letter sure. from the Mingas to the Machakas, yeah. she filed it there. Mm. And I have so much love and respect for her. Yeah. You know, when she passed on, we looked there and we took this thing, off we went to the my, is it the court, whatever, mm. we gave them this, they put the stamp, it was so easy. Wow. It was so easy. It looks like she was so organized. She was meticulous. Wow. She was meticulous. So you're saying even the 24 rand yellow baller? She that, had the letter. That, that, that you were married. She invested it. Yes. She invested it. She said, you know, this man, she was amazing. I promise wow. you, I wish if my mother had been educated, mm. I'm sure I would have been more educated mm. as well because, you know, Children of women who are educated, mm. you know, also get a chance to be mm. able to feather themselves. And, yeah. and I must say, my mother always said to the three girls, mm. you need to be as independent as possible. Mm. Never aspire to get married. And you look at this woman, you think, <laughs> when she said, and she said, when the marriage comes, it will come. Mm. But marriage is not the ultimate, my child. Yeah. Because the man that you're going to get married to, Yes. And we as Africans, mm. if he's educated or has the money, he must look after his family yes. first before even looking after you. Mm. And you think, uh, you know, when you're young, mm. you think I'm going to go to school, maybe go to university, have a husband mm. and, and, and have children and my husband must look after yes. me. Script. Yeah. And my mother told me, <clears throat> it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Two people you must depend on, God mm. and yourself. Wow. Wow. So, but look at how times have changed. I mean, um, you know, I was just stunned when you mentioned uh, she's invested uh, the Lobola money. I mean, she's still a note of the 24 rand <laughs> Lobola. Remember, Lobola 24 rand then versus now. Mind you, says Kulma, hundreds, Kulma 200, and hundreds of 200,000 versus Lobola 24. It's, times have changed. I mean, just shows with 
when we talk about inflation, it's a serious thing. It's not. A, it was a lot of money back then, just as much as um, I guess you think well, you could easily buy it for one rand or fifty cents, or even twelve cents. Twelve cents, I mean, yes. Yeah. And twelve cents then versus now about seventeen rand, rands. eighteen rand yeah. for bread. Yeah. Big difference. Totally. Now the other thing that intrigues me is that you've been in the music industry for more than thirty-five years. And uh, your generation of musicians, I mean, we're talking uh, the likes of Von Dade, uh, Simenia, we're talking about, I'm trying to think. I mean, those are legends. Yeah, that I mean, these are about. legends. We're talking about the late uh, Miriam Makeba. We're talking about, uh, yeah, the list is long. I mean, I'm trying to think uh, even now, Mam Letambuli, um, you know, th there's, there's that generation. Um, that you were with then. But there was, there's also within that, that generation a lot of them who died poor. What do you think is, is the difference between your generation that is still afloat and solid financially today versus those who actually died poor? Well, you know, when you speak of uh, Miriam Makeba, Kaifas Menya, Sisleta uh, Mbulu and all those were the generations mm. long before us. I mm. mean, they are fit to be my parents. Yes. And uh, these are the people who opened the doors for us. And mm. I'm grateful to them mm. for paving the way for us. Mm. Uh, and you're talking about real superstars. Yes. I mean, when you talk about Letambulu, Miriam Makeba, Kaifa <coughs> Jonas Gwangwa, mm. you know, um, these are real superstars. You see, the music industry is the industry, it's, it's a dog eat another dog industry. Mm. Mm. But uh, when we came into the industry, they'd been there, and obviously they then went into exile. Mm. And then we stayed with people like Abu Mam, Sis Abu Amam Abigail Gubega, mm. uh, Mam Tandi Klassen, mm. Ray Piri, and yes. all those other artists. Mm. During our times, you had three shows a day. Mm. It, either it's an indoor show or an outdoor show. Mm. I remember you, we used to get paid 500 rands per indoor show, mm. 1.5 for a festival. Mm. And you'll have three or four shows a day. Mm. And I don't know, it was so nice. We had chartered planes, <laughs> man. <laughs> We'd be flying from East London to PE to yes. Venda. Yes. And they would say, Brenda Fassi just finished performing in East London. And mm. Yvonne is going to East London. Yeah. Lucky Dube just finished performing in Venda. And it would mm. fly to all those places. Yeah. And I must say that, you know, my very first money hmm. that I had, uh, okay, I'm not talking about before I started singing, because yes. before I started singing, I used to enter for Persians hmm. and things like that, hmm. and winning 500 rands for Miss Patko, you know, for Miss Ellerins, and yes. it was a lot of money. I was richer than my mother, yes. you know, winning 500 rands. And what do you do with that money? Yes. That money, I say, yes. you know? And my first advance of 10,000 rands from Phil Hollis, uh. it was cash. Uh. Those purple five rands, you yes, remember them? I remember. Yeah, we put the money on the floor here. Oh. And some of us going mad, it's <laughs> so, you know. But my mother was not impressed because yeah. all she wanted was she wanted me to go to university. Yes. She didn't like this notion of me singing, yes. you know. And so I always say, yeah, I think. I just found my way in there. But um, because I knew where I came from, I wanted to say, I was scared of failing to start with. I was scared of being poor because I grew up poor as well. And I thought, with this money, how long is it going to keep me, you know? And um, you were talking about the likes of Abu Mam Miriam and things like that. These guys made lots of money. Uh. They worked overseas. They uh. were earning in dollars. Uh. We were earning in rents. And uh, things were not as easy as it used to be uh. now. But what was good was that if you sold 35,000 copies, you sold 35,000 copies. Uh. And obviously it depended on the contract that you had. Uh. Obviously 2%, 3%, we were not smart. Uh. Nobody was there to teach us. Uh about how to navigate in this industry. Uh, and lawyers really were always there for those uh, who, who, who were in the know yes. as well. Uh, so it wasn't very easy. But I soon realized that money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, and I thought, if the money's here now, will it be there uh, in the next three years, four years? And I must give credit to Phil Hollis. Yeah. The guy 
would say, okay, Yvonne, here is the check of 350,000 rands yeah. for your royalties. Yeah. And you say, huh? Mm. You've never seen this money. And he will say, we're going to give you 100, we're investing 200. Yes. And obviously, I hated him. Yes. I would be so angry. Mm. What do you want to do with my money? And, and <laughs> he instilled mm. that sense of wanting mm. to invest. Because from then, I, every check I got, mm. I would invest it. I would invest mm. it. And, and I'm grateful to him. Yeah. You know, people will always say, managers and promoters rip you off. They do all sorts of things. Mm. But there's one good thing that I learned from Phil. Yes. And I think even the people who are in his stable, mm. he will get guys, you know, to come and talk to us about investments. And yes. those who wanted to listen, listened. Yes. And those who didn't want to listen, they didn't listen. Mm. So um, things were not easy. Mm. Money was coming in. Mm. We were not educated mm. about it. It's either you want to go and buy a car or you want to buy clothes mm. or whatever. But um, as I said, I love money yeah. and I'm very stingy. Yeah. Um, yeah, Brenda would say, when Adam Zodra went, it was change, man, it was <laughs> And I'm like, hey, no, di mali Yeah. And, um, and, and, and just thinking that uh, will it be there in the next years mm. or so, that's really what has kept me mm. going. Yeah. And I've always been this business-minded person. Mm. You know, my first two hairdressing salons um, in, 19, in 1985, mm. you know, um, just thinking, okay, let's do business here mm. and there. Mm. That has kept me going mm. yeah was there ever a time in your life honestly where you 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 were broke for for some reason maybe? broke yes <laughs> ah, look, look when i was you. young of course yeah. yes yeah. when i was younger yes of course yes but when i started singing mm. really um first i'm grateful to god yes that i can say without mm. hesitation yes. and i'm grateful to the people who worked and supported me mm. and, and worked with me as mm. well because I never looked back. Mm. I thought, I'm going to look forward, and every cent ha must have a name. Yes. You know, I had a friend who used to say, Voni, oh, mama, if I tell a television. Yes. So, mm. whatever money that you got, mm. you had to give it a name. Okay. And uh, thanks to Phil and, mm. and he, the guys there, because he taught me about retirement annuities, mm. Mm. investing money. Mm. So, I've bought shares with Telcom, with Asonge with Patuma Nati, mm. with, and, uh, and uh, I'm happy. Wow. I'm okay. I'm not a millionaire. Yes. I, I am okay. Mm. I'm okay. And that's the most important thing, I guess, you know, um, being content, but knowing that you are not reckless uh, when it comes to managing your money. You know, to manage money, it's not easy. Mm. Because when it's there, you think it will come mm. again. <clears throat> so I always think about... Um, if it's not there, what am I going to do? Yes. You know, so I, I as I said, I'm very stingy with my mm. money. Yeah. I give where it's necessary. I do a lot of charity work. Oh. I give of my time. Mm. I give of the little cent that I have. I've taken a couple of children to school and universities. Mm. And, you know, with the Princess of Africa Foundation, which mm. is a, an NPC, mm. you know, um, we try and help where we can. Mm. And with the backing vocalists and session musicians awards that mm. I do, where we give artists backing vocalists, yes. you know, and session musicians, mm. the 25,000 rands, I say, if you are blessed, bless others. I think that's revolutionary because you are driving this award for backing vocalists when everybody else is focusing on the main act. And you say, no, but these are unsung heroes. How did that come about? You know, as a young artist, I remember I was at EMI Studios mm. and we were recording. This is from me to you, all we have to do. And they wanted either a guitar or mm. a saxophone or a trumpet. And they mm. got this guy to come in, mm. who put this one, to come and play. Mm. And he put in, I think, a saxophone, and the song sounded so beautiful. Mm. And I must have been 21 or 22 at mm. the time. And the guy took money from Talk To Me. Do you mm. know what is Talk To Me? You're, you're young, John. You don't know what Talk To Me is. <laughs> talk To Me is this pocket here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he took out 150 rand yes. and paid the guy. Mm. There was a session fee. Mm. And my heart was so, mm. I thought, wow. The song sounds so good, and this man 
has no recourse. Mm. If the album sells mm. 5,000 copies, mm. 10,000 copies, 100,000 copies, mm. this guy has no recourse. Mm. And he's made this song sound different. Yes. And it didn't sit well with me. Wow. But I was 21, 22, mm. but I went on with my life. Fast forward, you know, when I was much older, mm. still in the industry, I consulted with the likes of Zamom Buto, Faith Kekane, Biula, mm. Mandisa Langa to say, you mm. know what, I think you guys, because they coached me, I must mm. say, when I came in the music industry. No, Sisunga Kuganjano, you know, help here, mm. and we need each other. Mm. You know, you can't say you can make it on your own. Mm. And I thought, the people who sit there and play a guitar in my music, whether in the studio, whether in a live show, mm. the people who stand there and when I go, Ghana Uchema, and they go, Ndi Nonzomo Yowangu Guraziwa, they, mm. they complete me. Mm. But what recourse do they have? Mm. And that's how the Backing Vocalists and Session Musicians Awards were yeah. born, to say, mm. when I make money, I also want to have something. Yes. And for me, that's the little I can give mm. to those people mm. who are in the industry. You know, your voice still has that gravitas. You know, just those few lines you say, and as you were, as you were saying those uh, few words and singing those few words, my mind started going to uh, the song, Thank You, Mr. DJ, <laughs> for playing my song. You want to do that small chorus, <laughs> Nyan, Anji? I'm in love with the DJ, or thank you, Mr. Thank DJ? Thank you, Mr. DJ. <laughs> Mm. Thank you, Mr. DJ, for playing my song. Mm. Thank you, thank you. I've been waiting so long. Wow. You're waiting for the money, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're waiting for the money, actually. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So as we're going to close, um, what do you know about money now that you didn't know back then? What I know about money now and what I did not know then is because then I didn't have money. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then I didn't have money. Yes. Now, mm. um, I'm, I'm trying to save the little that I have. Yeah. Uh, you know, in 2020, I turned 55. Mm. And I'm happy to say I had about three retirement annuities because mm. I wanted to retire. Mm. So it, 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 I look back, and you know when you're 20, somebody says, invest the money, mm. take it, an RA, do this. And you think, no, I'll do it when I'm 25. And you're 25, you say, I'm do it, I'll do it when I'm 30. When you're yeah. 30, I'm doing it when I'm 35. Mm. Time never waits for you, True. you know. And um, insurances now are cheaper than then. You know, mm. insurances then were very yeah. expensive. Mm. So things have changed now. So I want to urge young people to say, when you have it now, mm. try and invest it because tomorrow may never cater for itself. Mm. So for me is um, being able to have learned from Phil and the people who he, he brought for, mm. to come and talk to us. Mm. And I was able to say, I will listen. I hated him mm. at some times because I thought, why is he doing this? Mm. But I look back and I say, you were very smart to have done that. Mm. Mm. So uh, money doesn't grow in trees. Money comes and go, I respect money. Yeah. I really respect money, but the little that you have, mm. invest it. And I think it's important that the young artists who come into the industry, mm. because you come in blank there, John. Yes. Nobody teaches us anything. So I'm grateful for programs like this, mm. you know, who are brutal and honest mm. to us to say, save money. Yes. You know, saving money, investing money, that has really helped me to put me where I am. Mm. I try, I hustle you know, for different businesses and there. And I invest money in different things. Mm. I've just, you know, done my homeware. Mm. It's at uh, one of the good stores. Can mm. I mention the name? Maybe at Woolies? Yeah. No, go get my, <laughs> you know, homeware stuff. Yes. Um, I've just done my hair products mm. as well. They are chop right. Mm. So the little that I have, I want that money to work for yes. me. So sometimes you win mm. and sometimes you lose, but it's important to take risks. Yes but being very careful yeah. of being reckless. I love what you just said now, because I'm seeing a, a, a person with many hats. You're a humanitarian, you're an entrepreneur of note. Um, you know, you talk about the products uh, that are in the shelves of some of the big retailers in the country, and apparently also run a limousine business. Um, maybe tell us about all those different hats that you have, because you know what, it actually highlights the importance of having multiple streams of income. 
and not just relying on one thing. You're a songwriter. Um, and, and I guess if one had to choose between singing and, and being a songwriter, well, you may love both, but songwriting obviously has more shelf life. Maybe tell us about all these different businesses you're in now. Very true. Um, as I said, you know, my first business was um, our hair salons. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started the business with my husband. Mm. And then in 1993, we started a limo business called Piantlani. Mm. And by 1990, we shut the business down because mm. I guess very few people were using limos mm. at that time. Mm. So I think we were just ahead mm. of our time. Mm. And obviously, with the transition, people were leaving South Africa. They were not sure, you know, black mm. people taking over the country. Is it mm. going to be stable or what? Mm. We lost a little bit of money there. But, mm. you know, uh, we then put it um, somewhere else. So every cent that I have today mm. is from endorsing products, mm. it's from singing, it's from my records, and um, I'm grateful mm. to those people who supported me. Mm. And that's why I find it very easy to support where I can because mm. I say I could not have done it on my own. Yes. You know, um, as I said, money came and I put it in good use, mm. as, as, as you said, mm. having different, you know, streams, mm. you know, saying if I fail here, at least I've got something there. Mm. And uh, yeah, and my husband has always supported me. Sometimes it's like, don't invest there, mm. you're going to hurt yourself. But I'm like, I, mm. I get down, yeah. you know, yeah. So yeah. I've, I've, been, I've been very, very lucky. I've mm. lost some money in different mm. businesses mm. and I've made little money somewhere else. Yes. Yeah, in other businesses. Before I ask you the last question, um, your popularity in the African continent is amazing. I mean, you've just recently been in Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone DRC. DRC. And uh, tell us about some of the countries you've traveled where you've graced the events they had there with, with your lovely voice. Sure. I've been um, almost everywhere in yeah. Africa, really. Mm. You know, Africa is my home. Mm. And um, thanks to Phil Hollis, mm. again, mm. because he wanted me to, to be popular in this continent. Mm. And by God's grace, it happened. Mm. I mean, you went to DRC, you went to Sierra Leone, and you heard about Brenda Fassi, Miriam Makeba, mm. Yvonne Chaka Chaka, Lucky Dube, mm. you know. And those people pay, pay very well, mm. really, you know, when you come and perform there. So, yeah, it's important to even know that, okay, because I don't make my money regularly, mm. how do I pay my vet? How do I pay my tax? Mm. How do I pay my provisional taxes? Mm. Mm. And it's actually very sad that we are still called vagrants. There's nothing for us yes. as artists. Mm. So I blame you guys from the <laughs> bank. I blame the government yeah. for not putting things for mm. us because our job is not your everyday work, mm. Mm. you know? So a person like me cannot come to the bank and ask for a bond mm. because I don't have a constant salary, yes. but you need to make things happen for us. Yes. And I think it's important for, for, for you to be very lenient mm. to us, mm. you know, to say, okay, you know, when you then perform, Yvonne, we know you don't have a regular salary or whatever, but maybe when your royalty come from Capas or from Sambra or from Sambra, we can take this money. So I really urge um, organizations like yours to be very lenient when it comes to the people in the creative industry because we don't earn salaries every day. Yeah. So, but we want homes, yeah. we want cars, yeah. we want to live well. Yeah. You know, the little girl, Shilowati, kon 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 kon, si vulele. It's full of soft life, but full of soft life, Naba Mandwan. So please, guys, be yeah. there for them. Yeah. And I want to be their advocate, to yeah. shout at you banks, to scream yeah. at you guys, to say, look at us. We're not just vagrants, mm. we are working, mm. we are cultural activists, mm. and um, come up with programs that yes. suit us as That's well, right. you That's know? Right. I, I don't have an eight to five job, yes. but um, you know, obviously put borders so that it's done in a structured way. Yes. But I beg you guys, yes. be there for the creative industry. Yes. Yeah. May you continue to be that voice uh, for the industry, and I, I hope, uh, something will come up and there will be much more meaningful engagement to bring about those changes. Lastly, um, what would you say to young women out there um, who are in the industry, probably earning three or even five times more than you know, what you used to do back then? What would you say uh, to them now when it comes to handling money? 
just in closure. Yeah. You know, to the young people today, both males and females, yes. uh, things have changed mm. so much. You mm. know, there's Twitter, there's Instagram, there's Facebook. They're making easy money. They're doing easy promotions. Mm. They, they become influencers. Mm. Things are better now mm. than then. Mm. But on the other hand, mm. you know, as I said, it's a dog eat another dog That's industry. Right. Mm. So to those who are making this money now, I want to say, work very hard. Mm. Have your feet firm on the ground mm. and know that money doesn't grow on trees. Mm. Money comes, mm. money goes. Mm. When it's there, seek advisors. Have mm. people like John yes. to tell you, mm. put your money there mm. and let your money work for you. Yes. Yeah. Mayvon, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for gracing us with your presence and for sharing these valuable lessons and uh, wishing you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for doing this. Good job as well. We really appreciate you. And uh, as I said, go look for all those artists there and yeah. support them. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Thank you so Thank much. you. Okay.